So guys, in today's session, we are going to discuss about a Glide System API. Okay. Glide System is a server-side API. Which is used to get system information. Guys, you can't use Glide System API in the client side. Okay. You can't use server side APIs in the client side. You can't use client side APIs in the server side. So Glide System is a server side API which is used to get the system information. <clears throat> okay. So Glide System is accessed using GS guys. GS stands for Glide System. GS stands for Glide System. So I'm going to background script to explain about Glide System in detail. Okay. So here GS. GS stands for Glide System. GS dot Glide System dot add error message. GS dot add So in the client side, you will use g underscore form that add information message. And in the, in the client side, you will use g underscore form that add error message. But if you have to show the messages from the server side, you will use gs dot add info message, <clears throat> gs dot add error message. Hi. Good morning. So error message will be shown in the blue uh, red color. Information message will be shown in the blue color is what we discussed. Okay. This is error message. This is actually info message. <clears throat> okay. Guys here, if you write message something like this in English, how German people can understand. German people can't understand English. China people can't understand English. <laughs> okay. French people can't understand English. They don't prefer to learn English. They, they prefer always learn to their own learn, uh, They prefer to learn their own language. If it show this message in always in English language, how they will understand? Hmm? That is where you have to create a message. So on a system UI, you'll have to create a message here. Okay. So we have <clears throat> message called user. This user, we call it as uh, this one in the Dutch language. Okay. Understand my point. So you can see language is English. If it is English language, show it in the show it as user. If it is Netherlands, Netherlands people use Dutch. If it is Dutch, show this message. Okay. So we created messages, right? 
<clears throat> we created this message in english we created this message in the dutch then what we will do instead of writing this instead of writing this here in english uh, what you will do is gs dot get message gs dot get message user so what it does if the guy is from if the guy preferred language is dutch the message will be shown in the dutch if the guy's preferred language is english it will be shown in the english my preferred language is english it is showing in user here if i change my preferred language to dutch if i change my preferred language to netherlands okay if i run this script you can see it is showing in the dutch right so writing the message here in the gs dot add information message add error message is not a good practice because if you are service now supports different languages it will always show in the english to show it in different languages you have to use messages you can call this message you can call that message using gs dot get message getting my point gs dot get message is used to call the messages from service now gs dot okay explain about so i am using gs dot print here here gs means glide system gs means glide system so using this gs dot print i am using gs dot beginning of day beginning of day beginning of day means what is the beginning of today this is the beginning of today as per the time zone okay beginning of the month beginning of week beginning of year what is the beginning of this year 2024 january 1st beginning of this week beginning of the next year what is the beginning of the next year 2025 january 1st beginning of the next quarter beginning of the next month uh, beginning of the next uh, two quarters beginning of the last 30 minutes beginning of the last 15 minutes beginning of the last two quarters beginning of this quarter so it's a beginning of this year what is the beginning of this year 2024 january 1st 2024 january 1st is the beginning of this year likewise if you want to get the beginning days beginning of this week beginning of the last week beginning of the next week beginning of this month beginning of the next month beginning of the previous month so beginning of the next year beginning of this year beginning of the um, last year okay beginning of the next quarter beginning of the last beginning of the next 30 minutes so likewise if you want to get the beginning times you will use be beginning of the year beginning of the week so beginning of the month <clears throat> So 
so it is the <clears throat> beginning of the month it is actually showing in the time zone both are same beginning of the month beginning of this month both are same so uh, it will give you beginning times so ideally it should give you beginning of this month means uh, june 1st 2024 but as for the time zone it is giving a different time okay and similarly you will get the end date end of the week end of the uh, month end of the next month end of the last month end of this year end of the next year end of the last year end of the next quarter so something like that you will get end dates end of what is the end of day so end of day is actually this one it is giving you today's end date end of this day there is no end of this day there is no end of this day or the day end of day end of day means today end of the day end of week so end of this week or end of week both are same end of week okay so 23 is the end of the week end of this week both are same okay any difference found guys no difference so you can see end of last 120 days end of last 12 months end of 12, end of last 15 minutes end of last two hours end of last two quarters okay these are the end times so what is the end of this month what is the end of this month june 30th is the end of the month hmm? so likewise we can get uh, beginning days and end ending days beginning days and ending days okay using glide system so normally normally um i want uh, 10 coconuts var coco is equal to 10 i have taken okay so you have taken the 10 coconuts then that is fine tomorrow you want 15 to change this number again you have to modify the scripting just to change the number you don't have to come to script just to change the change this number you have to write the script again you have to modify the script again there is a lot of process involved <clears throat> you have to modify the script and you have to capture in the update set you have to move it to the testing and again it has to be tested and it has to be moved to the production to avoid that to avoid that if there are any hard coded values something like this numbers hard coded values if there are any hard coded values as like this so what we will do is we will create system properties we'll create system properties okay i am creating a system property here
let me change my preferred language it's showing in the german language So you created a system property. Okay. So you created a system property here. What you will do, you will call that system property here using glide system. GS dot GS dot get property the property name. Okay. So what you will do, if you have to modify that number, you don't have to modify the script. You'll just change the property. You'll change it to 15 there in the property. Cutting my point. Instead of modifying the script, you go to the system property and you'll change the number to 15. As soon as you change this property to 15, so it will automatically fetch it as 15. Getting my point? So guys, instead of hard-coded values, we use system properties and we call that system property using these dot, sorry, gs dot get property. So we have a system property called instance name. We have a system property called instance name. So in that instance name, uh, uh, every every personal developer instance name is stored in that instance name. Instance name. So here my instance name is stored in this property. If I want to, <clears throat> if I want uh, uh, instance name, I will use gs dot get property. Gs dot get property, and I'll use instance name here. So that I can get the instance name dynamically. <clears throat> okay. So hard coded values, if there are any hard coded values, use system properties and call that system property using gs.get property. Clear, right? Hmm? Okay. <clears throat> and we have logging methods we have logging methods okay suppose we are writing the script here okay we let us say um let me just go to the shipping case form the shipping case form whenever you select the caller here The caller details should be populated. That is what our requirement. Suppose the caller details are not coming here. I have to debug the scripting. I have to debug the scripting. Okay. So how can I debug? Uh, on change of this value means on change client script will run. First of all, we go to on change client script. In the on change client script, we will check line by line. Okay. So we have client side debugging methods and server side debugging methods. In the server side, in the server side, you will use gs.log debugging, gs.info debugging, gs.error debugging, gs.var debugging. Okay. GS dot debug for debugging. GS dot print is used also for debugging. 
gs dot we will we will we'll use it in the uh, we will use it to print the output in the console these are the logging methods okay <clears throat> so let us say this on change line script is not working we'll go to client script We'll go to client script. So guys, GS is a server side API. So using gs.log, gs.info, you can't debug client side script. So to debug this client side script, you, can, you have to use uh, alert, you have to use um, uh, gs underscore log, js underscore log. So the script include is a server side script, right? So to debug the server side script line by line, you will write gs.log or gs.var or gs.info. Hmm? Getting my point. Line number five. Executed. Okay, if this line is printing, the printing means till this line it is working fine. So then what you will do, you will go to the farm and refresh this one. Okay, you, you have collected this value and this populated, right? So this line would have run, this line would have been run. So you go to the system log. Go to all. So you can see all means uh, warnings, debugging, errors, everything you can see here. You can click on all. Line number five executed, right? Not printed. Line number four. Huh? Should we save this one? How do we get the current logged in user in the client side, guys? How do we get the current logged in user information in the client side? So the method name is get shipping shipping case caller details. Where did we write this log? Update incident number method. So we have to write this line. We have to write this line. We have to write this line at this place. Okay. Now you can go and check the log is printed or not. You can see log is printed just now. So likewise, you can debug the lines using gs.log, gs.info, gs.error, gs.var, gs.debug, gs.print. Okay. These are for debugging purpose, script debugging purpose. So you wrote the script and that script is not working. So you want to uh, 
check you have to check the line by line so he, 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 at what line the script is not executing what is the mistake that you have done to identify that we have to use this logging okay so now i have a question for you guys how to get the current logged in user information in the client side so to get the current logged in user information in the client side you will use g underscore user dot user id g underscore user dot user name g underscore user dot um, uh, first name g underscore user dot last name g underscore user dot uh, user id so that is how you will get the current logged in user information in the client side if you have to get the current logged in user information in the server side so you will have to use blade system gs dot get user object gs dot get user this is a object it will hold current logged in user details gs dot get user dot get record dot get value email current logged in user email it will print okay let me print uh, many current logged in user values email location department mobile phone username first name last name hmm manager active company okay so you can see current logged in user email current logged in user location system id so instead of get value you can use get a display value these two are reference fields right <clears throat> see email location department mobile number login name first name last name uh, uh manager is empty yeah so will you will get full name instead of that full name so you can get current logged in user need any details if you want to get the current logged in user details in the server side you will use gs dot get user object after gs dot get user dot get record dot get value or you can also use get record dot get display value to get the current logged in user details in the server side so if you want to get the system id you can use sys id it will give you the current logged in user system id this is the current logged in user system id so using gs dot get user object you can get the current logged in user information in the server side okay okay <clears throat> so here this is an object instead of object you can directly get it instead of using object you can use directly gs dot uh, get user id gs dot get user id will give you the current logged in user system id it will give you the current logged in user system id hmm? get user name get user display name current logged in user display name means uday kishore gadiparthi okay get user name means login name get user name means login name
So get user display name means uh, like Kishore Gadiparthi. Get user name means login name. Login name means admin. User ID means system ID. Okay. So if the current logged in user has particular role or not, you can check it using GS dot as role. So if the current logged in user has this particular role, okay, it will say true. It will say no. As he is an admin, it will say true. Current logged in doesn't have current logged in user doesn't have this role, but still he is an admin. That is why it is giving true. Okay. There is no exactly here. There is no exactly here. Okay. That is how you will get the current logged in user in, uh, has current logged in user information in the server side using gs.getuser object. And if you want to get the current logged in user as particular role or not, you can check it using gs.has role. Okay. So, so if you want to get this uh, table name, gs. Get table name. Huh? If you want to get the any system information, then you can use this glide system. GS dot yesterday will give you um, yesterday's date. And uh, few are remaining. This is actually yesterday's date. As for the time zone, it is giving yesterday. Yesterday date is fifteen actually. Okay. Fine. <clears throat> so this one we missed. Gs dot. Gs dot hours ago. Hours ago, hours ago end, hours ago begin. What is the time five hours ago? So now let us say today, now the time is um, uh, 17th date, 6th month, 2024, 8, 8 hours, 37 minutes and 30 seconds. Exactly five hours ago, what was time? Exactly five hours ago, what was time? So this hours ago will give you exactly five hours ago what was the, what was the time. Okay. So this is the exact time five hours ago. Hours ago begin. Hours ago start. Hours ago start. Hours ago start means. Okay, hours ago start means, uh, let us say, <clears throat> five hours ago. Now the time is, um, eight hours, 38 minutes, right? 38 minutes, 30 seconds. Okay. Five hours ago, go start. So ego start means it will not take random hours ago start means five hours ago starting time. So now it is 8.30, right? 8.39. Five hours ago means it will take it will take five, not five hours, 38 minutes. The 38 minutes will, it will it will wash out. See here, if you use hours ago, the 38 minutes also will come. If you use only hours ago, the 38 minutes will come. It is, it is taking the time. If you use hours ago start, it will remove the time. Starting time it will take. So what is the actual time, Anil? Okay. So hours ago end means it will take ending time. It will take ending time. 
you can see 59 59 hours ago start means starting time hours ago end means ending time hours ago means exact time so likewise you have minutes ago minutes ago and minutes ago start what is the 10 minutes ago time minutes ago what was the time okay you can see zero zero ten minutes ago starting time ten minutes ago ending time it is giving 59 seconds here. If you use ego means it will give exact time. Okay. Hours ago, minutes ago, because months ago, months ago and months ago start, years ago, years ago, There is no years ago start. Only years ago is there. Okay. In the service node database, if there is a table exists or not, I want to check. Table exists. Is this table exist in service node database? Is user table exist in is user table exist in service node database? Incident table exists in service node database. Okay. <clears throat> so let us say now I logged into service now, I am doing actions. Without logging into service now also, we can do actions. Without logging into service now also, we can do actions. Let us say from Salesforce, whenever you create a record in Salesforce, Salesforce will connect to service now, it will create the record. That is actually by not logging into service now. Without logging into service now, from Salesforce, you are connecting to service now, you are creating a record. So how you will understand? A person is by logging in service now doing the actions or uh, um, the action is done from uh, different source. So interactive, non-interactive. So action is happening from the interactive session or non-interactive session I have to identify. So for that you have to use gs.getSession. is interactive. He is interactive true means by logging in he is doing action it is not interactive it is false means action is doing from some other source yes <clears throat> okay okay so now i have a requirement guys the shipping case table Current logged in user. Current logged in user means Uday Gadi Parthi, right? Current logged in user has created how many incidents in the last 15 days? In the last 15 days, Uday Gadi Parthi, a current logged in user has created how many incidents? I want to get that count. Okay. To get the count, what should we do? We have to use aggregate. Okay, GA dot add query. The 
Guys, system field name is sys underscore created underscore by. In the created by field, it will be stored as the login name. Login name. So then gs dot get user name. Gear dot add query add query this underscore created on greater than or equal to comma ds glide system dot base ego Days ago, start 15 days ago, GA dot add aggregate count GA dot query Okay. So 22 is the output that we received. 22 is the output that we received. Okay. So we will same same query we will apply in the shipping case table. created by admin is the current logged in user login name and created is relative after 15 Days ago, so what is the count that we get? You can see created by starts with admin and created by days ago 15. So, how many records that we are getting? 22. So, that we are able to get it using script, right? The shipping case table created by is admin gs dot get user name will give you the admin name current logged in user login name is admin right and here created on created on means it is greater than or equal to after after 15 days ago after 15 days ago means in the in the last 15 days how many records are created so get aggregate count so add aggregate count and get aggregate count so Total number of incident, the total number of shipping cases that are created in the last 15 days by current logged in user is 22. So here I have used a glide aggregate for counts and I have used glide system to get the current logged in user login name. Here I have used glide system to get the uh, 15 days ago date. Okay, combination I have used. You can use this glide system combination with the glide record also. Glide record secure also. Getting my point? And one last one. So you are able to understand, right? How do we use Glide system? Hmm? We'll see some more examples in tomorrow's session. And one last one, that is actually gs.eventq, which is a bit more important one. Event name comma object name comma event param one comma event param two. 
so this line is used to send email using script this line is used to send email using script <clears throat> so when we discussed uh, when we discuss email notifications topic maybe in in 3 to 4 sessions we will be discussing email notification topic in next 3 uh, to 4 uh, sessions okay okay so if you if you want to uh, send an email using script you will use this line to send an email using script so when we discuss notifications email notifications topic we'll be discussing about this one in detail okay so any questions from anyone guys regarding previous sessions or today's session Uh, yeah, uh, they one small doubt today. Actually, I mean, what I have observed is the time is displayed in the our uh, laptop and uh, the time displayed in the service now is different, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah, based on that one only, we got the values. Yes. Yeah, okay. Because of that one only, I got confused. Today. So, okay. you, you can change your time zone from the preferences here, okay? Yes. can change your preferred time zone. Maybe Singapore is actually, uh, Hong Kong is our nearest one. Yes. Okay, and uh, another thing, uh, they already asked you, but uh, you told me, but I'm unable to do that one. Because I'm unable to see the some features like uh, workflow diagram you showed me, right? Workflow. Why did you go to workflow? <clears throat> No, no, workflow in the sense from the designer, uh, we are able to see different types of designer, right? Sorry, this is a wrong word. Flow designer, uh, form design. Yes, yes. Form design? Yes. This one, form builder, form design. Form yes, builder. yes. Yes, today. You are not able to see this one? Yes. You upgraded to the latest version? Uh, that process only I'm asking you, they, how can we do upgrade thing? Go to the developer.servicenow.com. Okay. So go to the profile where okay. you can see upgrade instance here. You yes. have to choose the latest, latest um, Washington DC patch three is the latest one. Okay, choose the latest okay. one and click on okay. upgrade instance. Okay. So that instance won't be available for two, three hours. And then once the upgrade is completed, the instance will be back again. Okay. okay. So we okay. have three more APIs which are important. Let us say Glide date time, which is related to dates. Today is weekday or weekend. I have to identify. We can use Glide date time API. And uh, you, to the current uh, to the current date, if you have to add five days, to, you, to the current date, if you have to add five business days, okay. If the date is actually selected is in the past or future, okay. So if you want to do some date related validations. Okay. You, if you want to do some date related validations, we will use uh, Glide date time. So Glide aggregate will work on field level also. Yes. It will work on field level also. Only thing is Glide record can only be used. Uh, Glide record is used for trade operations. Glide aggregate is used for aggregations. Okay. Any questions from anyone, guys?
no they from my side i am good okay so keep uh, practicing guys hmm? maybe in in 2 3 days uh, the interview questions also will be completed i'll try to share it as soon as possible okay okay thank you guys and see you there in tomorrow session thank you all okay